Today we're here to talk about mounting Lepidoptera. In front of me here, there are two mounting boards designed for spreading the wings of the butterflies. The butterflies are different sizes, so we have different size boards. This one is designed for a small to a medium sized butterfly. If we have a butterfly with a wingspan of four or five inches, then we would need a board that would be slightly larger than this. Also, when we're spreading the wings, we like to have a board that has a gentle upslope uh, to have the wings slightly elevated. Uh, this is usually very good for the viewer when they're looking at these butterflies in a collection to have the wings slightly sloped upward instead of flat or angled downward. As you can see, there's a place in the center of this board for your pin to be inserted, which will be stuck into the butterfly, which we'll show you in a second. After we return from our collecting trip, we can remove the butterflies we have preserved in our envelope by gently picking them up by the wings. Be careful not to be too harsh with them or you'll remove too many scales and the butterfly will not have all its color or it'll have patches of scales to remove which won't show the complete design of the butterfly. We can uh, then prepare what we call a relaxing jar and what I like to do is remove the bottom from, what I like to do is remove the bottom from a uh, butter canister that is the appropriate size for the jar that I'm going to use and I'll use a sharp knife and, and cut completely around and then the insects I've collected on my collecting trip that uh, I would wish to relax, I can place inside of this. And the jar I select usually is a wide mouth jar. This one's a small one, but you can uh, get a larger one. And in the bottom of the jar, we usually have a piece of paper uh, that can be used to be soaked with water. And this water will provide uh, humidity in the jar, which will uh, go up into where the insects are when they're placed in the jar and relax them over about a 48 to 72 hour period. So we place this in to the top of our jar. We can then place our butterfly that's to be relaxed inside the jar. And we place the lid back on, screw it tight, and then we allow this water to evaporate and go up inside uh, to uh, moisturize the uh, insects and relax them. And after they've absorbed enough moisture, then uh, we can mount their wings or move their legs into the appropriate positions that we'd like to have them uh, preserved. And then once these insects are mounted, uh, we leave them to dry for a couple days. And once they're dried in position, we can move them into our collection and label them with the collection data. Another thing about these insects left in these jars here, be sure not to leave them too long because if you leave them for five or six days, mold will begin to grow on your insect. I've often used mothballs placed inside of my jar and I cut a little round hole in this one where I would place like a naphthalene mothball and that helps cut down on the mold growth. There are some chemicals that uh, can be used also to inhibit uh, mold growth, but we don't have those today. Now that our insect has been in here for two to three days, we're going to remove it and show you how to mount this butterfly. We'll take this one that's on top. Be very careful because it can still lose antenna and legs. We'll set it here on our board. The next thing we're going to do is take one of our insect pins out of our vial of insect pins and start to pin this insect. Once we've selected an insect pin of the appropriate size, we try to insert it through the center of the thorax on the butterfly where the butterfly will be level when we get finished.
And as we insert our pin, we can hold our butterfly to see, we can hold our butterfly to see if it is uh, correct with the pin running vertical up and down through the butterfly. Then we can also look here from the front and see if it appears to be running uh, up and down correctly through the thorax. We then adjust the pin through the insect so it's the appropriate size above the insect where we can still grasp it and also where we'll have enough room for a label to put our collection data on below the insect. Now the other thing we want to do is insert it into this mounting board. We want to make sure that it's perfectly level as we do insert it and that the body goes right in between the groove area that has been cut out for the insect. Now the other thing we need to do is make sure that we get the butterfly down into the board where the wings are level with the board so that when we mount it the wings will be flush touching this board. And you can kind of test and see if we're down far enough. It looks like we're getting very close. One thing one can do is if you have insect pins is take and adjust the wings to an appropriate spot and we can also adjust the hind wings as we go and move them out to where we would like them and then bring the wings on up gradually When you're inserting these pins into the wing, make sure that this pin is inserted close to a vein and on the back side uh, from the direction you're going to be pulling it. And since we're pulling the wings to the top, we always want to insert the pin right below one of these veins so we don't rip the wing. If we insert it in the middle of one of these cells of the wing and try to pull upward on it, then the wing will have a tear in it. And so we've got to be very careful about that. Now the next thing we do is we select a couple of pieces of paper to, before we make our final adjustments. These strips need to be of the appropriate length. So on this butterfly, we would like to have a piece about this length. And we can either cut it with a pair of scissors or we could just tear our little piece of paper and lay it across this wing. And then here on the other side, since we don't have any butterfly, other butterflies on here, we're just going to go in ahead and use this complete piece here. We need to adjust this wing make it a little bit over so we can get our paper on like this. Now as we get our close to final adjustments on this wing spacing, we'll stick a pin in the top and the bottom of the area. And again, let's get a little bit heavier on. And a pin right up here at the top of this and one at the bottom. Now we're ready to make our final adjustments. We're going to pull these pins out right here. And make our fine adjustments on these wings. So we'll do this left wing first. And I'm going to get this to the exact spot that I want it underneath this paper. That's approximately where we'd like to have it. Then we're going to bring the hind wing up underneath this piece of paper. And that looks like a good position for that set of wings. And then once we get there, we're going to stick a pin in between the two. And we'll bring another one down here to tighten up the location. Then we can remove these pins from the wings, it'll stay in position. Now we're going to adjust our other side. Now when mounting your butterfly, many entomologists will, will mount this forewing at 90 degree angles to the body. Some other entomologists will bring this wing slightly up. 
The, the main thing you want to make sure is that you have enough of the pattern in the hind wing to be able to identify this butterfly, plus being able to look at the venation of the hind wing and the fore wing so that you can identify this butterfly to family. Now the other thing I like to do is adjust my antenna and set some pins at the appropriate spot and hold them so they're approximately set the same. Another reason we do not like to leave the pins in the wings, if it's a freshly collected specimen, uh, the pin could allow the hemolymph uh, that flows through these veins to leak and uh, get onto the paper and uh, uh, allow that wing to stick to the paper. The other reason I, I don't like to leave the pins in is if they're left there, it leaves a tiny hole uh, in the wing, whereas if you put it out while that insect is uh, being mounted and, and doesn't stay there, then you won't have that little tiny pinhole uh, that would be visible uh, if you did leave the pin. Uh, therefore, it's best to have these outer pins not actually stuck into any portion of the wing. They're only going through the paper and into the board here at the top one in the center and one at the uh, base of the hind wing. And the same thing on this side, one here and one in the center and one at the top over here. And that way uh, there will need no pinholes left in that wing uh, when it's ready to be displayed in your collection. One other thing that some butterfly collectors like to do is place a pin in the back of the butterfly to hold the abdomen up and uh, one can be pasted to the base. A lot of times I like to use two pins uh, when I'm mounting the abdomen to hold it in position so that it won't move from side to side if, if you happen to jiggle this board. And I'll take the two pins and put them at a uh, X angle uh, underneath this abdomen going from side to side. And then once you get the abdomen where it's lined up where it looks like it's fairly straight with the rest of the body, you can just leave those two pins there and uh, the butterfly will dry with the abdomen up instead of sagging down. When you collect multiple specimens of butterflies or moths, you can start at the top of the board and work down. It's usually easiest that way. That way you're not trying to work over the work that you have already done or move these pins when you're touching the butterfly to the top side of it. So I usually like to start at the top of the board and then mount a specimen as we go down the board and uh, that way you, you can get uh, anywhere from four to five specimens on a board like this. And also the same procedure can be used for moths. You'll just uh, do them the same way. Since moths tend to have a larger abdomen, you would have to get a board that had a much wider slot, uh, probably at least a quarter inch to a half inch wide on, for some of the larger moths. Another thing about drying, if you live in a climate that has high humidity, then the drying time will take longer than the two to three days I talked about that we normally have on the high plains of Texas. Um, and it might take as long as a week for this butterfly to dry. If you're in a real rush, some people have been known to stick a board like this into a, a, a low temperature oven in the range of uh, 200 degrees to 225. Uh, turn the oven on. Uh, once it reaches the 225 temperature, turn the oven off and then slide your board in, close it up, and leave it there for about three hours, and that will assist with the, uh, with the drying of the specimen. For those that need to dry their insects quickly, the oven drying is acceptable, but not commonly used. Also remember to never put these boards into a microwave uh, because of these metal pins. That would be uh, uh, very bad, plus it could uh, also damage your specimen. Once the specimen is dry, you want to carefully remove each pin uh, from these papers. You want to carefully remove these support pins from underneath the abdomen, because remember it's going to be very dry and very fragile once it has dried. And then the pins holding your antenna in the uh, correct position, be very careful when you remove those. Once all the pins have been removed from your board, the papers have been taken up, then grab the center pin of your specimen and remove it and you can place this in your box. Also remember that your collection data, you want to make a small label, 
put the date you collected, the host plant you got this insect from, the location where you got the insect, and then if you collected it, you want to put your name on the bottom of the label. If somebody else collected this specimen for you, then put their name on this label. And then this will make this specimen very valuable for 10, 20, 30 years down the road to know where it was actually collected for somebody that's looking at the host range of a specific butterfly or a specific moth. This will be very valuable information.